Welcome. I'm Troy Lambert. I'm here with my partner in crime, CJ and I. Uh, Hello. What CJ and I are going to do is we're going to dive right into some last miscellaneous things that features in Plotter that we may not have covered in other videos, but that are still important to help you organize your story. So with that, let's dive right in. This time we've used Blank Project before, but this time we're going to use the project Die Hard. Why? Because my dog's name is McLean and I love Die Hard and kind of why not Die Hard but also by showing a fully fleshed out project, then we can show you some of these features in a way we'd have to build a lot of things to be able to do that if we didn't do that, so if we didn't use a, a fleshed out project. So one of the things we're gonna use is we're gonna use filtering. Now there's different places where you can filter what you're looking at. The first one is in the timeline. And for that, I'm gonna illustrate. I often use a tag that talks about the speed of scenes. So I'm gonna use the tag fast. And I'm going to filter for the scenes that are fast, okay? And we'll show you tags in a minute. And so these are scenes that are tagged as being fast. Action-packed, fast scenes. Now, I probably haven't tagged all the scenes in Die Hard that are fast, but this shows me that I have three very fast scenes in a row. And maybe after that, I need to have a slower scene to give my readers some ability to rest, okay? So if you have a whole bunch of scenes in a row that are the exact same speed, sometimes that's not a good thing, even if they're really fast moving scenes. But you can also filter by things like characters. So I can filter by Al Powell and I can see only the scenes that Al is in. And I can see, okay, well, he's in these two scenes. So if he was a major character and needed to appear in some other scenes, well, then maybe I missed out on something. Maybe I did something wrong, okay? And so I can see if he if he exists there or not. So that's an important thing that you can filter by as well in the timeline. Now, if I go over to our notes section, which we've talked about before, I can filter there as well, right, CJ? What can I filter by in the notes section? So if you click on filter, then what you can do is you can filter by everything that, that we covered in previous videos when it comes to books characters, places, categories. So whatever you've already filled in here in the notes section, you can then filter according to the information that you've organized. So now notes are going to be filtered by books or specific books, or they're going to be filtered by Die Hard 2 or characters. So the, all the notes we have about this particular character, now those are going to show up. This is really helpful because if you've got a ton of notes and you don't want to look through all of them to try to find the specific one you're looking for, you don't have to. It's just going to take away all of the others, and then you're looking at the one that you want to look at. This is especially good for my ADHD because I get massive overwhelm. So if I can eliminate all of the, the noise and focus in on the one thing that I'm looking for, that's how the filtering really helps me out. How do you use it, Troy? Do you filter frequently? Or is that the way yeah. you is too? I filter, I filter by book a lot. Okay. And the reason is I only want to look, for instance, in my one series, there are 25 books in a single plotter file. And 16 of those have been published. And so there's a lot of notes to keep track of. And I don't want to look at the notes from book one when I'm writing book 17. Yeah. So I only want to look at notes that are related to that book. So I'll filter by book. Now, if I want to look back at something that I'm referencing from book one, you know, then I can unfilter my notes and go back and look at that at that note or whatever. But I don't need to see them all all the time. So like in this case, I've filtered by Die Hard. This is only the things that are happening in the movie Die Hard. Nothing from Die Hard 2 and the rest of the movies in the series. I'm especially, interested. <laughs> I'm especially interested in your Twinkies and yeah. that we now. <laughs> yes, Al That's Powell, amazing. he has the, the ingredients to Twinkies memorized. So, of course, I had to add these here as a note. This is clearly a script note for Al. In, anyway, that's another inside joke on the movie. If you don't get it, it's okay. We'll just move on and see that you can also filter in characters. So you can filter by kind of the same things by book. I do this often with characters, especially as well. Although there's another way to filter by book with characters, and that is by simply moving through the book by the characters by book tabs. But you can also filter by other things related to characters, the category they're in, whether they're protagonist or an antagonist, their core fears, even uh, their core desires, 
whatever it is you filled out in those fields, attribute fields, you can filter by that as well. So there's all kinds of things you can filter by. If we filter by protagonist, the protagonist in all the Die Hard films is one guy, John McClane, the guy my dog is named after. Anyway, so yeah. But that's that's how you can filter with characters. You can also do it with places. And again, it's very similar in that you can do it primarily in places you're going to filter by books. You can also filter by tags, but for the most part, you're going to filter by books. So in Die Hard, the only setting really is Nakatomi Plaza in the first book. But if we go to Die Hard 2, then there's a couple of other settings as well that are a part of that particular movie. So just depends on what you're trying to look for, but usually filtering by book is the one thing that I'm looking for most of all. Now with that, we're going to go back to the timeline because we're going to talk about something else that's a miscellaneous feature that not everybody knows about Plotter or knows how it works, and that is search and replace. So right here is just a regular search bar, and you can type in any word like John, and we're going to find all the places where John is mentioned. But let's say we wanted to change John's name and we didn't want to go and find every instance where John is mentioned and change his name. Well, up here under in the upper right hand corner is a search feature that has search and also has a place next to it search and replace. So we could go in here and go John and then we could say we want to change this to James. Now I'm not actually going to do this because I would have to then my whole file I would just have to mess around with all of it. I don't want to do it. But anyway, but we could type something like James here if we wanted to change John McLean to James McLean, and we could replace every instance of that. But you can replace every instance of another word as well, so or another character name. So let's say Hans, who is one of the terrorists, if we wanted to change his name, we could change that name everywhere in the project. Basically, we would come along here and just check all of these and then replace that name with whatever we wanted to replace it with. Again, this is kind of like Microsoft Word, a search and replace. You want to scroll down and be sure that you actually want to change all those. If Hans were letter was letters in another word, perhaps, you might get some weird replacement things that would happen at that point. But this is something that you can use to search and replace almost any word within your document. And you can do this anywhere. You can do it in notes. You can do it in characters. You can do it in places. So you'd be in any tab that you want and replace all of these all of these instances of this particular word. So that's how search and replace works. Now let's move on to tags. So tell us some ways that you use tags, CJ, and then I'll tell you some of my secrets. Or not so well, secrets since I tell everyone. Anyway. You <laughs> it's like my the method to my madness, more likely. When I do tags, I'm actually looking at which characters are in which scenes because a lot of the time I am writing alternate points of view romance books and so we're getting we're getting things from one character's perspective one love interest perspective and things from another love interest perspective and sometimes it's even within the same scene so I need to know if that is being divvied out the way that it should be is it affecting the pacing have I put like five scenes in, in, you know, scrunched in together. And so what it helps me do is once I have things tagged, then I can go and filter and I can look at that on the timeline and, and I can see if I've, if I, if my pacing is off or not when it comes to the way in which I'm alternating points of view there. So that's one thing that's really handy for me when I'm using those tags. Absolutely. The way I use them most often is I use them in pacing. As I mentioned earlier, slow, medium, and fast, I tag each scene. And that way I can see how my pacing, whether it goes up and down throughout the book or whether it stays consistent. So that's one of the most important ways that I use tags in my particular stories. Now, we're going to cover one last miscellaneous thing that we don't talk about in other videos, and it's the export feature. Now, if you've seen, the export button is in the top right-hand side of your screen. And it's this little arrow that looks like, as you know, we don't write in Plotter. Uh, we export it to something. Now, there are default exports. The default to MS Word will de default everything that is in this file. It will export it to Word using heading styles in the navigation pane. We're not going to talk about those. We'll talk about those separately in another video about how exactly it organizes them in Word. But it, it takes everything in this file and exports it to Word. 
The one below it takes everything in this file and exports it to Scrivener. However, I am never going to use either of those things. I don't know about you, CJ, but that's because I'm a writer and therefore a control freak. So <laughs> I'm going to go to the advanced section and I'm going to choose exactly what I want exported. So you can check all of these boxes, whether you're in Word or in Scrivener, but you can also uncheck the boxes that you don't want to show up. For instance, I don't want the Pinero screenplay method in my book, in my Word file, because I don't need that in my Word file, right? Yeah. I may not need the category or custom attributes, or maybe I do want those. One thing I almost never export that you can is the images that are in Word. It makes for a really big Word file, and it's really not something that you necessarily need within your Word file. Okay, and I tend to do my export a little bit differently. It also offers you the option to export a title page. I don't ever do that either. But, and do you write in Scrivener, CJ? Or do you write I, in Word? Yes, I have used Scrivener. It's been a while because I switched to Mac so I could format books and vellum and stuff like that. And on the Mac, for some reason, I've had a weird disconnect with trying to figure out Scrivener on Mac. And mainly mm. it was just because I was lazy and decided oh. not to. And then I went back to Word. Oh. Well, <laughs> I'm, in, I'm using Scrivener on Mac, and I think I would probably be confused if I went back to PC. But I don't know why I would ever do that, because Windows 8 <laughs> beta really soured me on the whole thing. Anyway, it's <laughs> another long story and sad one. Okay, but I am going to reveal how I export to Scrivener. So because I use Plotter during my writing process as well, I have Scrivener open on one screen and Plotter open on another. So guess what I don't need in Scrivener? I don't need any of these things mm -hmm. because all I want is the writing part. Now, I do put the description in a synopsis. You can put it in the body or in the notes. This is where I like it. If you're familiar with Scrivener, you know where this is. If you're not familiar with Scrivener, skip this part of the video because it's not going to be relevant to you. But anyway, and... I also usually don't put templates into Scrivener as well. I just don't want them in there. Um, that's not how I export things. So I customize this. You can use the default or you can customize this to be any way that you want. That is how I use export. I don't ever use it the default way, but you can. It, it, it's actually very easy. It pro provides a really cool looking file. It's actually fine. This just happens to be the way that I do it. So anything else you want to talk about related to export or any of these other items cj no i think we covered it i think we did some good damage nailed it oh, yes All nailed it for sure nailed it for sure <laughs> all right well with that everyone thanks for joining us i hope that you got a lot out of this as always if you have other questions feel free to reach out to us as plotter at plotter we're always happy to answer those for you and with that thanks everyone and we'll see you in our next video